Among the waves of Quebec's Côte Nord, the Mingan Archipelago houses some of the most dramatic and fragile ecosystems on Canada's maritime shores. These islands, most of which are contained within the Mingan Archipelago National Park Reserve, are home to magnificent seabirds, rare plant life, as well as marine wildlife such as whales and porpoises. But it's far more than flora and fauna that drive thousands of visitors yearly to this remote region of eastern Quebec. The islands tell the story of thousands of years of geology, beginning 10,000 years ago when the glacial mountains retreated from the landscape. Over the following millennia, the wind, waves and tides carved out impressive monoliths out of the soft limestone shores, creating some of the most mesmerizing landscapes in eastern Canada. Visiting the Mingan Archipelago is something that my family has been attempting for over a decade. It seems that every time we tried to make the journey, something blocked our path. Finally, in 2022, the four of us made the journey across the St. Lawrence on a road trip from Nova Scotia to Ontario and spent four magical days exploring the Mingan Archipelago in the far eastern coast of Quebec's North Shore. The journey took us across the St. Lawrence River from Matan to Godboot. Then we followed Route 138, which winds along the St. Lawrence River past tiny villages and countless dramatic waterfalls to the town of Have St. Pierre. Have St. Pierre is the jumping off point for most of the Mingan Archipelago's attractions. This tiny town of fewer than 4,000 residents is home to absolutely fabulous restaurants and stunning views of the islands and the Gulf of St. Lawrence, where you can often see whales and porpoises frolicking in the water just offshore. After getting settled at Hotel de Havre and enjoying an amazing seafood feast at local restaurant Chez Julie, we woke up early to meet Cedric Rousseau, our Parks Canada guide who would spend the next day helping us to get acquainted with a few of the Mingan Archipelago National Park Reserve Islands. We joined Service Maritime Boreal aboard the Calculo for our first day tour of three of the archipelago's islands, Ile de Fantôme, Ile Nia Piscao and Ile Quarry. The waters of the Gulf of St. Lawrence were draped in a thick fog, and the ominous weather couldn't have been more fitting for our first stop. Ile Fantôme, or Phantom Island. As we approached the island, ghost-like shadows emerged from the fog, revealing some of the surreal landscapes that has made the Mingan Archipelago National Park Reserve such a phenomenal destination for photographers and nature lovers. The island, with its nature-crafted sculptures, countless gulls, endangered plant life, and weather-worn cliffs, features two hiking trails and endless views. After exploring the island, we boarded the Calculo for a short journey to Ile Nia Piscao. We docked right as the fog began to lift giving us sweeping views of the sandy beach and the massive rock formations that have made Nia Piscao the signature destination in Mingan Archipelago National Park Reserve. This is one of just two islands within the park where inland treks are allowed, so we embarked on a journey following well-laid boardwalks through the lush coastal forests. The terrain rose steeply and we retreated to some absolutely fabulous views of the island's coastline and dramatic rocks. Our Parks Canada guide laid out the island's history, including how, as the glaciers retreated, 
the landscape began to rebound, rising up from beneath the waves rather than being worn down from the top. As we emerged from the forest, we were treated to the Grand Dame of the Mingan Archipelago. These massive stone structures have countless legends behind them, each one more fascinating than the rest. There was one more stop for our first day of exploring the Mingan Archipelago before heading back to have St. Pierre for the night, the dramatic Il Quarry. Like Nia Piscow, Il Quarry has inland trails to explore, most of which are along boardwalks. But the experience between the two islands is dramatically different. Where Nia Piscow is covered in a dense, lush forest, much of Il Quarry is topped with wild salt marshes and bogs. It's fascinating how two islands that share so much history and location have evolved in such a different manner. Il Quarry isn't without his own monoliths, though. Along the water's edge, just a short walk from the dock, is a breathtaking collection of picturesque rocks. The return journey to Have St. Pierre had us incredibly excited about our next day on the Mingan Archipelago. But before embarking on a night of camping on Grand Isle, we journeyed out to Cap Fair for a short hike to the scenic Red Falls before enjoying a delicious meal at the waterfront Le Promenade. The following morning, we grabbed our gear and hopped on board a rib boat for a windy ride through the fog to Grand Isle, where we would be camping for the night in one of the unique Parks Canada Oasis units. We've stayed in Parks Canada Authentics in several places, including the Thousand Islands and Point Pelee National Park. But the Oasis was something completely different. These teardrops on stilts are tiny, but packed with a load of features, including a table that converts to a bed in an upper level that can sleep one adult or two children on a full width hammock. With time to explore the island, we set out on the castle hike, an eight kilometer round trip trek along rock scrambles, towering cliffs and cute waterfalls that was made slightly more difficult due to the fact that we had completely reversed our tide schedules. We ended up striking out when the trail was supposed to be impassable. Whoops. We made it to the end of the hike just as the skies opened up. So our hike back to the campground was wet and slippery. Where the boys jetted ahead like goats prancing across a mountain, Christina and I plodded our way with far more gentle feet. The rain continued off and on most of the evening, but by the time the morning came, the sun was shining and the weather was beautiful. Our ride back to Havre St. Pierre was smooth sailing, with the occasional whale and porpoise sighting along the way. After landing, we packed up the car and made the drive toward Long Point Dominion, where we would be spending our last night near the Mingan Archipelago. Along the way, we made a stop at the Inu Cultural Center in the town of Mingan, where we learned about the rich Inu communities that live in this region of Quebec. We had the chance to taste bannock and berries and learn about the many ways in which the local indigenous peoples have used the land throughout time and the dramatic changes that occurred when Europeans arrived. Our next stop was at the Marine Interpretation and Cetacean Study in Long Point Dominion. This engaging museum has stunning displays and interactive exhibits outlining the important work being done here to study marine mammals. We had planned to take the rest of the day to visit the eastern islands of the Mingan Archipelago. However, high winds meant that trips for the day had been cancelled. But our amazing tour operators at La Famille Loiselle worked their magic and scheduled us for the following day first thing in the morning. With some extra time on our hands, we checked ourselves into Camping de Mingan, which is also run by the Loiselle family. Our waterfront trailer allowed us to enjoy a home-cooked meal, gaze at candy floss sunsets, and experience one of the best moonrises that we've ever seen.
We woke up relaxed and ready to roll on our final day exploring the Mingan Archipelago. Rolling up to the Long Point de Mingan dock bright and early for the final two islands on our visit. Our first stop was Il Nu de Mingan. This island is dramatic for its lack of features. Unlike many of the islands of the Mingan Archipelago, Il Nu de Mingan is almost entirely tundra with no trees and hardly any vegetation that reaches higher than your waist. Because of the ecosystem's fragile nature, the island's interior is strictly off limits, but there are dramatic rock formations accessible via a scenic coastal hike. Visible from its shores is the most unique island in the archipelago, our final stop on these dramatic shores, Ile au Perroquet. From a distance, it's easy to confuse this island for a steamship, but the towering structures in the center of the island are actually cliffs and a lighthouse, which has been in operation since 1888. Unlike many archipelago islands, Ile Perroquet has no towering monoliths. Instead, another attraction draws visitors to this tiny island. The island is home to thousands of seabirds, including Razorbill, Black Guillemot, and Black-legged Kittywacks. The star attractions are the colorful puffins who nest among the rocks returning to their nest with mouths stuffed with fish when the high tide arrives. The Mingan Archipelago is among the most fascinating places to visit in Quebec. There are few places east of the Rocky Mountains where you'll find such a vast collection of dramatic landscapes. Although it's a trek to reach, this quickly became one of my favorite places to visit in the province. I hope that you'll have a chance to check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps to support our content and we appreciate each and every one of you who does. We'll see you next time on Wandering Waggers Adventure Family Travel.